Aloha. Thank you, Council Member Pine, for inviting me to participate in this town hall, this virtual town hall. Uh, as you know, UHERO released a interim forecast update. In that forecast, we, we actually released three different forecasts. We released our sort of preferred baseline forecast, an optimistic or a high scenario, and we also released a low scenario forecast. And the differences between those um, were really had to do with how rapidly the virus spread, uh, what the overall economic consequences were for the global economy, and then as a result for the Hawaii economy. So in the in the optimistic scenario, we had a very sharp tourism downturn followed by a very rapid recovery. And really the economy, uh, the Hawaii economy was forecast in that scenario to have completely recovered by the end of 2020. In contrast, in the low scenario, we were looking at the virus continuing to spread uh, further into the spring and even in the summer in some parts of the world uh, to have deeper economic downturns in the U.S. economy and the global economy, and then as a result to have larger economic effects in Hawaii, and so the overall recovery took longer. Unfortunately, that low scenario that we released two weeks ago is really sort of a very optimistic high scenario in today's world. So in just two weeks' time, things have changed enough, um, including rapid spread in Europe, uh, more rapid spread in the United States. Uh, our forecast for the U.S. economy has deteriorated uh, quite significantly. Uh, we're looking at roughly double the size of the downturn, so a, a downturn for the U.S. economy of close to 4% for 2020. Um, those then have implication for Hawaii's forecast. And I mean, the bottom line is that Hawaii is currently in a recession. Uh, we are in a recession that is deeper than the Great Recession. There really is no precedent or no comparison for, uh, for looking at where you have a near total shutdown of tourism. Uh, we've already had significant job losses. We now have a, a shelter in place. And there are no comparisons to, to benchmark off of. And so the depth of the downturn is highly uncertain, but the um, recovery process is even more uncertain. The, even if the health crisis that we're facing uh, ends quickly uh, in the next three or four weeks or um, somewhere in that neighborhood, the economic recovery will still take an extended period of time. And unfortunately, no one can really tell you how long. Right? I, I know that's highly uh, unsatisfying. Um, and, you know, certainty would be, would be a wonderful thing, but there's just simply too, too many unknowns from uh, the health side, from the epidemiology. Um, we don't know how long the virus will continue to spread. We don't know what kind of recurrence will happen. Uh, so will we need to be doing uh, some form of additional social distancing in, uh, in the summer and fall? Um, epidemiologists are, are modeling the, uh, the outbreak and, and looking at what the spread, uh, how the spread should occur. But all of that depends on the, the extent of, of um, efforts to contain the virus. Uh, it also depends on the extent of herd immunity. And there's, there's just a, a whole handful of assumptions that have to be made in order to get a prediction of how long and, and what the uh, containment efforts will need to look like three months down the road, six months down the road, and, and beyond. Uh, I can tell you that forecasters will typically underestimate how bad a downturn will be, as we already have, and uh, you know every forecaster in the country is in the process of downgrading their forecasts. Uh, as I mentioned, our forecast for the U.S. economy is close to a 4% drop in economic activity for 2020. That's roughly double what we thought two weeks ago, and it's probably still too optimistic. Again, it will depend on the policy response. Uh, our current thinking is that 
near complete recovery for income, um, for employment, uh, will likely take until the end of next year. So while we may have a fairly rapid recovery of local business, uh, if we can get past the initial health crisis and the need for, uh, for shelter in place over the next three or four weeks, well, the shelter in place order is through April. If after that, with enough testing, if we can get a real handle on uh, what the spread of the virus looks like here, test, 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 and track, uh, and quarantine uh, patients, and uh, we can start to roll out uh, the local economy back to something approximating normality and then begin to uh, open up to tourism in, in uh, coming months, uh, then we could see a fairly quick recovery uh, during 2020, but not anywhere near complete. You know, realistically, households and, and businesses don't need an economist to tell them what they should be doing uh, to try and weather this kind of a crisis. Obviously, the first thing is the health crisis and staying healthy so that if you are able to work, um, that you're continue, you, you continue to be able to work by staying healthy. Um, the next thing is really uh, preserving cash flow so that you're able to cover uh, necessities, whether it's paying rent, putting food on the table, medical costs, um, mortgages, and other other um, fixed payments that are that are required. Now, if you've already lost hours or lost a job, that becomes increasingly difficult, and uh, the current status of unemployment benefits will only help uh, a little bit. I'm not aware that we have increased the. Uh, the payouts yet, and I know it's even difficult to get signed up for unemployment benefits. That that will change. The state will will get that system uh, working. Uh, but then the 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 next thing to do is you have to talk to uh, your creditors. You have to talk to your landlord. You you've got to start reaching out um, right away and ask for help. And uh, many of them will be providing help. And that's the that's the primary. Don't wait, go ahead and start that process right away. Mahalo.